It's likely that you're already thinking about leadership in a serious way and that you've displayed the courage to get where you are in obviously your career right now. But to get to that next step, you'll need a new level of courage. But then the gremlins start sneaking in and you ask yourself, oh, why, why me? Somebody else might be better or it's just too soon. I have too much to learn. I'm not sure if I'm ready. But I've seen too many people back away from great leadership opportunities out of fear. Uh, leadership won't necessarily be the best course for everybody and choosing to pursue leadership is a highly personal decision. But the statements above really, uh, they're, uh, though they're masquerading as neutral, they're actually negative. They almost always mask an insecurity and a desire to avoid the challenges that come with leadership. Statements like these are simply fear talking and nine times out of 10, they're actually telling you a pretty much a BS story and yet you believe it. The first step in becoming a fearless leader is recognizing your own value. One of the qualities of truly confident people is their inclination to think, you know what, why not me? I've done the work, let's go for it. Rather than sit on their hands and wait for the opportunity that never comes. When preparing for aviation officer candidate school, I probably looked like I had it all together, right? Thanks to my pre-Olympic training and time spent as a division one athlete, I, and I had a pretty solid academic record, but I even still wondered, would I be good enough? After all, Pensacola's AOCS is the place where legends are made. You've got Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, John McCain, and the Navy only wants the best of the best. And I knew that even if I got in, only a handful of those who actually made it to Pensacola would go on to earn those coveted Naval Aviator wings. And from that, that group of aviators, only a very small percentage would actually go on to be aircraft carrier fighter pilots. The odds were clearly stacked against me, like stacked a mile high, no doubt. So I had to give myself permission to lead, permission to believe that I was good enough to at least try, permission to fly in the face of fear and doubts. And I tell you this story because these fears are common to anyone who has accepted the challenge of leadership or a position of challenge. And after years of coaching executives, leaders, high-performing athletes, and entrepreneurs, I've seen the same self-doubt plague those who face their biggest leadership roles or challenges, or those who dare to step up to a larger, more challenging role. And if, if leaders aren't able to, or high performers aren't able to avoid that hesitancy and shove it to the side and be bold in their conviction, convictions, things usually don't go well. Courage, because it is the flip side of fear, is that first vital element in fearless leadership. And if you can cultivate courage in yourself and then eventually in others, you'll have what it takes to go after these limitless possibilities for your future, for your career, professionally, personally. If you can tamp down those voices telling you you can't do it, whether they're internal or external, and come into your own as a fearless leader. So if you want to be a leader, you must be able to take this first step, summon the courage and know that you can be a leader. Everyone is scared some of the time. The leaders who do succeed are the ones who choose to believe that they are just as worthy of a leadership role as the next person. They know that fear, at least initially, doesn't disqualify them for leadership. They use it to continue learning and they put that fear aside and they ask, why not me? High performance requires fearless leadership. No matter your situation, the number one way you can ensure that you are the best leader that you can be is to build your ability to work through fear and then get done what needs to be done in spite of that fear.